Hello, everybody. Ella J here on behalf of WrestleZone. And today I am joined by your wish upon a shooting star, Mrs. 450, Rachel Armstrong. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. How is everybody? I am so good to be talking with you. It's been a hot minute. We've been trying to put this together, but it finally happened. So I'm so happy to talk with you today. Obviously, wrestling and a lot of non-wrestling as well. But I wanted to start out with a commonality that we actually had. You have a very extensive background in athletics with volleyball, basketball, track, cross country, golf. I wanted to talk about volleyball specifically because I myself played for eight, nine years. Um, I don't don't know the extent of your background, so I'm so curious how in involved were you in the sport of volleyball specifically um so I remember doing like a volleyball camp when I entered like elementary school sometime it was just a one-off thing and then like once middle school came around where you could actually like sign up and play for school I did that all throughout middle school and high school and did like little tournaments in the summer sometimes so yeah pretty much just through middle school and high school for high school like athletics now, what position did you play? Because I feel like I did everything except except for libero because I was one of the taller people on my team. Um, what was your designated position or if it's across the board, probably, maybe? I was a little bit of everything because okay. I was from such a small school. So, like, it would depend on each season who tried yeah. out, who didn't. Like, I started as a setter. I was just, like, setter was my main position. And then I moved to, like, front row hitter, which is kind of crazy because I'm only, like, five foot. So, like, no one believes me when I say that. (laughs) And then, like, uh, my last couple years, I transitioned to, like, the defense in the back and just doing that and setting. Yeah, so, I I mean... It's not the craziest thing to see like a front row hitter be like five feet tall, but you do have like a, I feel like a tall jump though. I feel like yeah, so you were able to like, definitely. you know, jump up if if needed and all of that. So pretty versatile. It seems pretty much for myself did a lot of back row stuff as well, man. I don't get to talk to a lot of people who have volleyball background. I I, I miss it sometimes. It's oh, good. It's so bad. You're, but like the competitive nature is just in you, even if it's just for fun, you like, I feel like the competitive yeah. nature is just always ingrained in you too. I say I still play with my siblings in the backyard and we get so yeah. like competitive over yeah. it still. And it's like it's not that serious. <laughs> it kind of is though. I feel like with such an <laughs> extensive background like that, I feel like you kind of like it's just ingrained in you, you know, too. Yeah. Um, but you know, a couple weeks ago, kind of a full circle thing happened for you. You know, your your track and cross country coach attended one of your wrestling shows in what you called a full circle moment. So tell mm-hmm. us about that reunion and what did she have to say about you wrestling now? Uh, it's amazing. She's actually one of the people that like when I said like I wanted to be a wrestler, like granted in high school I still wanted to go to college no matter what. So I knew yeah. I was gonna go to college. I knew I wanted to wrestle. But she was one of the only ones that were really behind me saying, like, you go get a girl, like, you can do everything. But, yeah, and she really, she always pushed me so hard in cross country and track. And I didn't do cross country as long as I did track. She kind of suckered me into doing that <laughs> in the off season. So I was doing cross country and volleyball, actually, at the same time. So, like, summers were pretty crazy. It'd be like the go run your couple miles around the neighborhood and then go right to volleyball conditioning and training and yeah, it was th- those summers. I don't know how I did it, but <laughs> yeah, she definitely pushed us and she she made me go pretty far in running, I think. And I think that helps me like so much as being that kind of an athlete coming into wrestling because I already have my like workouts that I know yeah. I did in high school that I just do and stuff like that. I'm I'm so curious. Obviously, uh, you she was there as as well as her cousin. Did she give you any feedback or, or thoughts on watching on your actual like performance that night? Oh, they loved it. She She's not the biggest wrestling fan, but her cousin was. Yeah. And so she, he, uh, she wanted to take him to do that, experience that, especially because I was one of her former students and yeah. athletes. She thought that'd be cool. So it was really cool to like be one of her like first matches that she watched and really get her pulled into it because they already wanted to come to the next show that's up there. So it, it's so cool to be like, it, it's just, I, don't, I can't even put into words how like cool that is. It's just... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> maybe your gate, maybe you're her gateway into professional wrestling. Now that'll be yeah. truly full circle for you. Mm. Definitely, you'll you'll have to keep update whenever you see them next. You'll have to keep update and give them nudge. So are like, are you a, a fan yet? You enjoying it? You know, um, I definitely will. 
you know, obviously you mentioned the the different, there is different conditioning for everything, but I've never done track or cross country, but I can imagine, obviously it's a lot of running and stamina, um, mm -hmm. uh, centered stuff volleyball yeah it's i feel like it's more cardio for volleyball personally because you're not yeah. you're running around but it's not like long distance it's not that much mm -hmm. stamina and it's a lot of you know strength and jumping and stuff um in comparison like I, I feel like though with your background and kind of everything it's kind of all around you have so in comparison to your conditioning to you know volleyball cross country basketball how was that transition transition to then into conditioning for professional wrestling like what differences did you see in your body as you're trying to adjust to professional wrestling conditioning honestly transitioning to wrestling was super easy for me like as far as like the workouts and cardio and stuff yeah. like i was golden when i started and it's because, like, I was a sprinter in track, so I knew how to strengthen my body to do, like, go fast. And I knew how to, like, condition my body to, like, pace out. And, then, like, I also put, like, basketball and stuff, so I was already, like, physically tough and used yeah. to getting shoved around and stuff. So, like, I think high school athletics and, like, me, like, sticking to, like, all the different kinds of sports really, like, set me up for success for wrestling. Because I had, like, a well-rounded, like little mix of conditioning and strength and all yeah. that together you know i i'm so curious too you have that athletic background you also just graduated we'll talk about this more in depth later but you also graduated in accounting and finance you got two degrees two degrees um, obviously you're in professional wrestling now so there's a lot of things that you've been doing in the last couple of years but if you think back to little Rachel childhood version of yourself what did young Rachel envision doing for a living when she got older was it wrestling was it something in sports was it always accounting and finance what did your little what did the little version of yourself envision older Rachel doing you know it's hard to like I knew I wanted to wrestle like yeah. I found wrestling like right before I got into middle school mm -hmm. and right when I saw it I was like okay I'm gonna try this I want to do this but I didn't like really want to be a wrestler and like really shoot for it until like the beginning of high school. Yeah. So like, and even like when, when I was graduating high school, I was like unsure what I wanted to go for for college, but I knew I wanted to do something so that I could like just have options. Yeah. I knew I had to have options. So like, I really didn't know, like, I guess I always knew I wanted to be a wrestler, but as far as like how far I would go or if I would stick to it, I had no idea. Like, I, I didn't even know, like, before I started wrestling that there was other things other than WWE. Like, mm -hmm. I had no clue there was wrestling, like, in Japan and yeah. other countries. I had no clue about, like, the independence or nothing like that. Like, I didn't know how I thought it was supposed to work, but I had no clue. Well, you obviously figured it out. I feel like all later, I feel like all of us, especially if we were introduced through WWE, I know for a while I, I was like, I only knew WWE. Then I discovered like TNA and then like the indies and all of that. This whole world opens up. I found it uh, in middle school around the same age as you. So I totally get that. It's a whole new world, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you obviously have wrestling. You have that background. And now you are the owner of two two degrees in accounting and finance are those degrees something you hope to use in the near future or is it something you're kind of keeping in your, in your back pocket for later down the line potentially well funny story is like I graduated and like I knew I wanted to wrestle but I didn't know if I could do like both of them at the yeah. same time so I was gonna try it and see how it went but then I because I, I don't know like I don't I know that I have to do right for myself in life, but I also know how much I want to wrestle, just, like, yeah. really dedicate myself to wrestling. And, like, right out of college, I got offered, like, a couple of positions to do, like, office work and stuff. But when I brought up, like, the traveling and all that for wrestling, it was like, the, well, I don't know if we could do all that. So it's just like, well, sorry, <laughs> I'm just going to figure something else out. So, like, I I do, I did want to use my degrees at first, but it's kind of hard to, like, find a job that's going to work with me with wrestling. Because I'm not going to yeah. sacrifice wrestling when I know that's what I want. Yeah. Um. Sometime down the line, though, I do want to take my real estate license test and maybe get into something like that to where I could do it on that, like, side or something. Yeah. Or maybe even find, like, a hybrid job. But, I mean, for now, I'm just trying to find part-time work and really focus on wrestling. 
for yeah. once since college took so much of my time. Yeah, you know, you're young, but you're also, uh, and you want to have fun, enjoy your wrestling, but you're also aware enough, you know, financially wrestling, I feel like yeah. it's so unpredictable. So you're keeping yourself grounded, which is good. Um, but, you know, and hopefully in the future, you know, you never know what could unlock. That's the beauty about wrestling is, you know, you can, I feel like you can balance it with a lot of side hustles, you know, and all of that, especially while you're still circulating on the indies. Now, something I am interested in uh, during your college days, you said it gave you the opportunity to go to Japan. So oh, yeah. how, can you explain how that happened and what exactly you did in relation, you did in <laughs> Japan in relation to that? Uh, Yeah. So like I did my freshman year and I learned about study abroad and I really wanted to do that because I always heard about it yeah and so I signed up to do a study abroad program my uh -huh. sophomore year I believe and I went to Germany first I went to yeah. Germany and then the next year there was opportunity to go to Japan and that like that was right when I started like really watching like Japanese wrestling and stuff so I wanted to go to Japan check it out and see like is this something I want to do like down the road kind of thing mm -hmm. and I studied abroad for like two weeks had the greatest time, the best, you know, everything. And yeah, that was, I, I really only went for a school yeah. um, those two times. And then I did wrestle in like London and Germany. Yeah. Not that, not that long ago. Yeah, I, I was going to talk about that, though, too. Um, But before we get to that, obviously, Japan is something you're super passionate about. I can see a little bit of uh Japan inspired uh Japanese culture inspired into your gears which again we'll talk mm -hmm. about later um so obviously I feel like you're very well versed on who's involved in the Japanese wrestling scene so who are some competitors from the Japanese wrestling scene whether it's some stardom you know Marvelous, Sendai Girls, Ice Ribbon, Marigold there's so many uh great promotions out there who are some competitors you'd like to work with from the Japanese wrestling scene? Uh, I just recently faced uh Maki Ito and Miyu. Yeah. I'd love to run it back with them over there sometime. But really, everybody, all the girls over there are so incredibly talented. Like I can't, like I could go on for days and days and days. Like I would just, I'd love to be over there and just train at the very least, just to soak it in, you know. Now, how was it balancing out? Because obviously you're a very bubbly person. So is Maki Ito, but hers is like to a whole other kind of level. You know, I she's very her. charismatic and dancing. Tell us about your experience working with, uh, she's basically a pop sensation, Maki Ito. Mm -hmm. She was great. I loved working her, her style, freaking the energies were unmatched <laughs> in that match. Like it goes crazy. And she's such a gem. She's such a sweet person in general. Now, I'm so curious. I don't know how um, the the language barrier, how was that aspect? I I don't know how her English is um, and all of that, or or if you know Japanese and all that. How was, how was the language barrier situation for you guys? I'm so curious. Um, It wasn't bad. It wasn't the easiest either, though. Same with me, you, when I faced yeah. her. I was so nervous because I knew that was going to be a factor. And, like, I'd never experienced that before kind of thing. But, like, uh. As far as, like, body language and stuff, we really kind of figured out what we, each other were talking about. But, like, as far as, like, communication and talking to each other, it was a little bit harder. So, like, once we got in the ring and, like, figured stuff out, we were we were fine. We knew there what we, we, know, we knew what each other were talking about. <laughs> yeah, it, it's good. You can kind of trust your opponent, too, you know, and all of that. You have that, I feel like, natural chemistry with them, um, especially in trying to overcome a, a challenge like that, you know, communication-wise. Um, but it's obviously... Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say it's actually like interesting though. It's like to like finally like like you're trying to explain something. You're trying to explain something, but it's not clicking until you do it, and then it's yeah. like, oh, light bulb. That's <laughs> what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> like we had so many of those, and yeah. it was just funny. Like we just laughed about it. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it prepares you, though, for the future, you know, you know, you can talk, you know, but now you know, now you know, you can communicate, you know, uh, yeah. like facial wise, you know, uh, not non verbally as well, you know, motions and stuff like that, you know, you can utilize that in mm -hmm. the future. And obviously, you mentioned you had alluded to this, uh, you made a little tour of Europe earlier this year with stops in the UK and Germany it was returned to Germany for you before mm -hmm. we get into the specifics tell us about your overall experience and some of your biggest takeaways from your European tour oh I had the most fun over there I actually went to um London with uh Sue Young yeah and she was such a like I was so nervous I was so scared because that was the first time of me going like like actually by myself because I'd went with my classmates before yeah 
and she took such good care of me. She made sure I had everything I needed. I got to everywhere I needed to go. She took me to all these cool places. Like, I'll never be able to thank her enough for how comforted she made me feel. Like, she doesn't understand how much stress she took off my shoulders. And, uh, yeah, the food over there is amazing. Like, I, like, it could, no, nothing could touch it. Nothing could touch their food. But yeah, the food was amazing. The people are amazing. The girls over there are on a different level. It's it's just insane to, like, be able to face, like, girls in different countries and just see, like, really how far women dressing has come, but also just how much everybody wants it. And it's so cool to be able to, like, have that kind of opportunity and everything. I recall over there, I know you had matches against L.A. Taylor, Sapphire Reed, I believe Baby Allison was on there as well. Uh, you had mm-hmm. you had a string of matches in there across uh, the U.K. and Germany. So it, from a performance standpoint, was there a certain performance slash match of yours during this tour that you feel the most proud of and why? I think the most proud match I had that weekend was with uh, Sapphire Reed in the WXW wildcard. That girl is the sweetest thing you could ever. She is. Oh man, she took she took real good care of me too everywhere I went, and she's such a sweet competitor. She uh she's so dedicated and just loves what she does. And I think we really had a good match in our in our little opening thing. And and like you said, exploration wise, you obviously got to eat a lot of new foods. I know their mm-hmm. their portion sizes are are different. I believe from the U.S. I think they might be a little smaller. I was told. Yeah. Um, tell us about some of the sights you saw, the food you ate, and any of the fun activities you did uh, over there in the UK and Germany. Oh, there's so many. I can't even remember. <laughs> we saw Big Ben. That was oh, pretty cool, yeah. actually. Yeah, we saw um, the changing of the guards. I think that was probably the like coolest one. Is just because like I'm not that big into history. But, like, it is cool to me when I, like, hear about, like, history and learn about it. And then, like, you get to go see it, like, real life and stuff. So that was pretty interesting. I never, like, thought I'd be able to see something like that, like, in person. And everyone, like, back home was like, dude, no way you saw that, this and that. So, like, that was super cool. Do you recall any, I don't know, but maybe not necessarily new food, but it's, you know, it's made in, 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 in Europe. Was there any foods that you recall specifically, like, enjoying the most? I don't even remember what we really ate to be actual with you okay. everything everything tastes a lot fresher though I can recall oh. that like there's such a difference in taste and like quality mm-hmm. and even though the portion sizes are smaller you get so much more filled up from them too interesting I wonder if it's because they're fresher if that like triggers like chemically I don't I don't know like chemics yeah. and all that but I, I wonder if that has anything to do with it you know it triggers like a chemical so you feel like fuller and stuff like that that's good to know because the UK has been on the UK specifically has been on my bucket list for a long time um and Big Ben all oh, that would be so cool to see you know especially and hopefully we get you back over there soon because there's so many competitors over there in Europe that I feel like you would do really well with and you know i i feel like though even if you haven't uh had the personal experience of you know a lot of matches abroad you are friends with somebody who has um of one of your friends and mentors billy starks you know obviously Mm -hmm. you've wrestled uh her before she it's crazy though because she she's still very young but she's already a mentor to a lot of people because she's been wrestling for a while now so how is that dynamic with you and, and billy you know you're you're pretty close in age you know experience wise she has that leg up but you're very close I feel like bonding age wise so tell us about that dynamic with you and Billy and learning from her yeah Billy's such a she really took me under her wing like right off the bat like I got training and she uh invited me to do the girl fight show yeah and that was one of my first like matches out of training and uh I think I think my no I think her opponent canceled and I ended up getting moved to face her instead and I'm only like maybe three four months training wise then and she really took care of me and you know I think what it had made us like because I think that was the first time I had actually met her and she was already killing it on the indies yeah and I mean after that she really took me under her wing and made sure like 
like let me know shows and stuff that I could jump in cars with and ride with people. Even to even to now, she gives me feedback on all my matches and stuff, and I could ask her questions. And no matter what time of day, she's answering and telling me all kinds of stuff. Like she doesn't understand how helpful she's been in my journey. Are there any specific elements, whether it's related to wrestling or maybe personally, that really have stuck out to you um, based on what Billy has told you? Um, I think like, I think both because like, like, I feel like as far as like both of us being in school at the same time and both of us wrestling at the same time, it, we have so many connections right there. But as far as like wrestling, there's so many things that she's like told me and like to keep in mind and stuff that I feel like it helped me like so much as a wrestler. And like, I feel like I, you can like get told something so many times and then like the light bulb goes off. Yeah. And there's like a lot of those moments, I think, with her that she explains it different that like from anybody else that you can really grasp and understand like what she's actually like, like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just the wording, like the way that she says stuff that people yeah. have previously told you, it makes more sense when she says it because she knows how to like word it to you, like, you know, people our age and stuff. You know, obviously it's great to keep growing alongside somebody, uh, but you've also, you know, grown yourself immensely as a person and as a competitor over these last couple of years. So in what ways do you think that you've grown as a person, as a competitor across uh, about what, three, four years now, your career? Oh, leaps and bounds. It's yeah. crazy. I feel like with school, I had to be so patient with myself because yeah. I was so like mentally and physically draining to like do school work and go to wake up and go to lectures and all that kind of stuff and then having to travel and be tired and having to do homework still the homework was the most stressful thing to me because it was and I was I was trying to balance a job too at the yeah. same time so I was doing all three and it was uh so that definitely made me like that took me to my limit but that really showed me like you really can do anything you want to you just gotta stick it out and believe in yourself but same with wrestling is because, like, I really thought, I don't know what I thought when I started wrestling. I didn't know how anything was supposed to work. I didn't know how far I would go or anything. But wrestling has also taught me that I could do a lot of stuff that I didn't think I could because, like, I never did the gymnastics or cheerleading or nothing yeah. like that. So as far as all the flips and high-flying stuff I do, I couldn't tell you where that came from, especially the 450. I just got up there and did it one day, and it just shot, it shocked me, too as much as everybody else <laughs> so yeah wrestling is, has taught me so much about myself that I wouldn't even know especially with confidence like I don't even know Rachel from high school and looking at her now it's crazy because I was so shy like I can't believe I really go out there and wrestle mm -hmm. in front of like all these people and I'm not shy to do all this stuff in the middle of all these people kind of thing so like yeah I'm a completely different person from who I was a couple of years ago just because of wrestling and just because I pushed myself to do school too. I feel like in general too, confidence is one of those things that I feel like you gradually acquire just with age as well. Hmm. Um, but also with more experience, although sometimes, like you said, sometimes you just do stuff without experience, you know, sometimes you got to push yourself outside your comfort zone to see if mm -hmm. it sticks. And obviously, you know, uh, your, your, your flying apparatus has stuck, um, which is kind of a staple of you now, um, which is fantastic to see. Obviously you're fearless too, in that nature. Um, mm -hmm. it's crazy though, too. Cause like you said, you don't have a gymnastics background. It kind of just happened, but you unlocked, you unlocked a hidden talent that you didn't even know, you, yeah. had, you know? <laughs> uh, so, so keep with it, but you know, you talk about, you know, the growth and the accomplishments that you've had the last couple of years, those were recognized last year when you ranked on the PWI 500 list, which is crazy. Well, let me tell you crazy. how big of a surprise that was. <laughs> Go ahead. Like I got out of like, I was walking out of a lecture and I just, my phone started blowing yeah. up with all these people. And I'm like, dude, what's going on right now? <laughs> and I saw that and I was like, no way. My little Ricky self, like who even knows who I am? <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah, you ranked number 469. Uh, you know, obviously you said your initial reaction was like, yo, what? But tell us more about what this honor meant to you. It, it was really validating for me because yeah. like 
I was in so, such a tough spot with like school and like yeah. training and like training. I felt like I wasn't like getting better, getting worse. I thought I was just, you know, rut kind of. So like that was kind of a hard time for me to be really honest. But seeing that it was like, dang, OK, like I am doing a little bit of something. I'm trying, you know, like, I don't know. It's such a validating moment for me. Like it took me from like being in a rut to like being so motivated to like wanting to do better and like really just push myself harder. Yeah, you know, and I feel like you, especially over time, again, you've evolved yourself, you know, character wise, in ring wise, and you're keep pushing forward. I want to talk to you about your presentation a little bit more. Um, Obviously, Mm -hmm. your your character is very bright. You like to make people smile. That's you're very high flying and fearless. But when it comes to your ring gear, uh, where do you typically look towards for inspiration when it comes to crafting and envisioning your ring gear? Um, to be honest, like, I, just my personality, like, I just love bright colors. I love, yeah. like, the mismatch. I, I don't care if colors match or anything. Like, that's just my jam, I guess. But, like, my first gear, like, yeah, I just, I wanted something bright, colorful. I just want to showcase my personality a little bit more. And my, my gear lady, she made it happen. And I knew I liked stars. I love the stars, so... Yeah, I just was like, put those together and let's see what happens. Did your love for stars, obviously, because that's like a staple, you know, you got the star, you got the star cutouts and whatever color it is. Is your mm-hmm. love for stars where your nickname, you know, your wish upon a shooting star came from? Yeah. Or Okay, I figured Definitely. so. And, and also, were you like a, because I think that was like a, a Disney thing, you know, too. Are you a Disney kid, too, at heart? Um, I'm not like diehard because okay. like, I can't recall like a bunch of scenes and all the <laughs> okay. movies and stuff like some people. But yeah, I did watch a little bit of Disney here and there. Yeah. But uh, that mostly came from just because like, I just want to make people smile. I want to pe- yeah. like, make people happy. And like, I hated that I was so shy and that for so long that I just wanted to like bust out of that. And I wanted yeah. to really let people like see who the real Rachel is. So I think your wish upon a shooting star is like, well, what else can you wish for except for happiness? You know what? That's a good point, Rachel. That is a very good point. Uh, you know, you want to make other people smile, obviously, but who are some people in the industry that make you smile? Obviously, Billy Starks is one. Who are some people that mm-hmm. make you smile? Uh, Mouse. I love that dude. He's he's so nonchalant, but he's just the funniest dude that you wouldn't even think. Uh, Bradley Prescott and Slade. Being in a car with them is like you're gonna lose your breath laughing so much because they're just that funny. But literally, I like I just can't wait. Like in wrestling, I just love meeting new people and being able to travel to new shows and being able to meet different people. Mm-hmm. And I love that so much because like I'll, I, it makes it always so fun because you just always look forward to meeting new people. You know, I, I want to close out on somebody who made you smile early on in your wrestling fandom, who unfortunately, I guess, unfortunately, but also fortunately, just announced their retirement in professional wrestling, that being John Cena. I know he Dude. was one of your early influences. I feel like that's like the end of my childhood is December of 2025. John Cena is going to be retiring. He was a staple of your early fandom. Tell us your reaction yeah. to this uh, announcement of Cena's retirement. It's crazy because, like, when I turned out, when I first discovered wrestling, he yeah. was the first person that I ever saw on TV. Yeah. So, like, it's crazy because, like, he went from the first person I ever saw, my first favorite wrestler and all of that, to now retiring, like, when I, you know. So, that's pretty crazy. But he, he definitely had a, a run for the ages. So, it's super, it's super cool to look at people like that and just to see, like, the longevity of your career and how many different things you can do and all the different stuff you can see the you know everything it's cool to see like look forward well look at someone's career and then look forward to that for yourself kind of now we still have about a year and a half left so it's not we're not pumping the brakes just yet um Mm -hmm. who are some people uh, because again you grew up uh watching about the same people same time i did um who are some people that you would like to see john cena wrestle on this retirement i feel like randy orton you have to you have to say randy orton they need to go throw back one more time but who are some other people you'd like to see him wrestle on this retirement uh tour to bring it back full circle i was gonna say randy orton for sure i'd love to see him run it back with the 
Seth Rollins. Yeah. Also, The Miz. I would love to see that again, too. Hopefully, and, I mean, you... it, hopefully The Miz isn't concussed this time. But yes, absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say someone else, but now I can't remember who I was going to say. Mm. Escape my mind. <laughs> I wonder if they would have him uh, throw it back with Roman. I don't know. I though I feel Ooh. granted a lot can change, um, but it feels like they're going the direction of uh, like the Bloodline and The Rock probably next year. So I don't know if that's something they would do right away. But I definitely agree. We need one more Orton Cena match. Definitely the Miz, because um, yeah. the Miz is now kind of Miz would have to turn heel again though for that to happen. Yeah. I feel like um seth rollins would be awesome to see it's been obviously they feuded over the u.s title um and probably the wwe championship as well at some point aj styles oh, how would... could we forget our truth yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's literally his idol <laughs> we need little jimmy <laughs> little jimmy in there too they yeah. had to throw that one in there oh, i know uh yeah man i feel like the... we're gonna have so many magical moments i i'm mm-hmm. sad but i'm also excited at the same time um i totally get where you're coming from um but obviously before we let you go rachel please let the listeners know where they can find you on social media and support you yeah find me on instagram rachel double underscore armstrong uh twitter or x whatever you go by (laughs) um armstrong 18 rach and rachel armstrong on facebook and you can support Rachel. She has a lot of cool shirt designs there, too. Some really cute mm-hmm. merch we'd love to see. You can find that all of that on her social media. It's linked in there and everything. Rachel, thank you so much for chatting with me here today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. This was so much fun.